Are you recording? <laughs> um, there's masterpieces lying around that were about 17, 16th century that has been pushed down. Some people do want to preserve it, some others don't. The idea is to put it into the ground. Um, crime rate's a bit high, you know, people dying and what have you, but other than that, it's a nice community to stay in. Um, people are friendly, people know each other. Uh, yeah, you can get anything back. Like are people from the government here yeah, they don't actually really help and if uh, they do a lot of um, job uh, opportunities that they give the people in the area and at the surrounding areas so our government really gives us uh, they bring from in us. What's up everybody? Duke of Johannesburg here today and welcome to another installment of Forgotten Joburg. Today I will be covering the eastern parts of my city and figured what better place to start off than the cathedral here in the heart of Hjulbrau, um, the Greek Orthodox Cathedral, also the headquarters for the Hellenic Society of Johannesburg and what a place for it to be located. Certainly one of the roughest hoods in all of the country. But fear not, because you're with the Duke today. And uh, I'm about to show you about, starting with the neighborhoods, starting immediately east of the city center. So, here. So, I mean, obviously, you know, this be the Duke of Johannesburg. So, uh, I can't just roll into uh, the most dangerous hood in all of South Africa without filming at least something. So, uh, yeah, let's take a look around. Right, so I don't want to dwell on Hillbrow too much because, as I have mentioned already, it is one of the more notorious neighborhoods in Johannesburg and therefore all of South Africa. So content on Hillbrow is not very hard to find. I will go ahead and say that some places of interest to see in the area are, of course, as I have previously mentioned, the Greek Orthodox Cathedral. And about a block away from that, one can see the old Jewish synagogue that is... Of course, no longer in use, but I do think that it does have some very impressive architecture nonetheless. Of course, Eastern Johannesburg, as I've mentioned in some of my previous videos, is still home to quite a sizable Jewish population. Of course, not in this particular neighborhood anymore. As, of course, the area of Hjelbrau and neighboring Yeovil and Berea have become synonymous with South African white flight and demographic changes in subsequent years. So, if you can hear me over the wind, I am currently just entering the neighborhood of Bertrams, which is immediately east of Hillbrow and the Johannesburg CBD. As you can see, towering above me in the background there, Ponty City apartment blocks. Actually the largest residential building in all of the Southern Hemisphere and uh, upon its construction was actually the largest residential building in the world. Um, the street that I'm walking down right now is actually probably one of the dodgiest streets in all of Johannesburg which is actually saying quite a lot um, but funnily enough if you look on either side of me you'll actually see some uh, old mansions that still remain in this area so without any further ado let's get into Bertram's chat to some of my mates see what we can you can see right behind me is the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Of course I myself am Eastern Orthodox and therefore not in communion with the Oriental Orthodox but 
as uh, anyone that has explored my channel might have seen, I have made a couple of videos exploring my Eastern Orthodox faith and in doing so have received a couple of comments from people of the Oriental Orthodox churches, namely the Coptic and Ethiopian churches, asking if I can perhaps do uh, some videos in the future talking about Oriental Orthodoxy. So now I know where to go to. Bertrams is a very old area located immediately east of the Johannesburg CBD. It is officially the oldest surveyed area in all of Johannesburg and the entire Witwatersrand area. Despite its central location being located directly next to Hilbrau, the most densely populated neighborhood in all of South Africa, and right across from the Ellis Park Stadium and Rugby Complex. It is an area that most South Africans have never heard of, which is a common trend among all of these council estate areas. What do I mean when I say a council estate area? Basically, I mean an area that has houses that look like this and has flats that look like this and is predominantly populated by working class and lower income white Afrikaans people, as well as a changing demographic. Hi, my name is Jacqueline. Uh, I would like to speak to you about Victoria Yards. They are people from the government here. Yeah, they don't actually really help. And if uh, they do a lot of um, job uh, opportunities that they give the people in the area and at the surrounding areas and um, if they could fund Victoria Yards with some money that would be amazing because our government really gives us uh, they bread crumb in us. Thank you. Sure and uh, what about your business? Oh my business is pallet and tire furniture and if uh, I've really been pushing and it's stagnant for a while uh, to get things done in the house, like things you need and plus getting material, that's also difficult. Um, I've had businesses before, my mindset wasn't right, so now it is and I really want generational success. I'm 41 years old and I have tried so hard and if you could help with that, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. And how long have you stayed in birth rooms? Oh, since 1986. You might actually notice the surrounds from my introductory video or the little intro that plays before my videos start. So a little fun note there. I'm now in the Maurice Freeman uh, council estate and you'll notice that uh, it's a little bit different to what you're going to see in America or in England being that there's a lot of uh, single standing houses. Away, brother. How's it, man? Oh, so, I think one of the main reasons behind the old government going more for the single standing houses as opposed to high rise flats is um, that it creates a much better quality of life. So, one can still exist in uh, subsidized housing, yet maintain a sense of individuality and um, or personal autonomy, space, and um, you know, have a little garden. Why not? Um, therefore, you'll see that being quite a contributing factor towards Joburg's suburban hoods and the uh, general trend of embracing more of a uh, suburban sort of feel rather than a high-rise or uh, overly congested uh, high-density vibe like you might get in Hillbrow and other certain parts of the city. Uh. Not bad place, um, poor community, huh. um, crime rates a bit high, you know, people dying and what have you, but other than that, it's a nice community to stay in, um, people are friendly, everyone knows each other, uh, yeah, you can get anything, like, I don't know, 
Uh, Early in the morning, shops are open. It's a good place to stay. Nice community vibes yeah, here. Just, I think they could maybe tidy up a bit. And maybe, I don't know. Now, crime rate's a little high, but it's, I think it's because of people. It's like people creating problems between each other. Yeah, yeah. And then there's fatality. Okay. Yeah. And everybody from like the different races and all of they'll that? All get along. All get along. Oh, that's along, nice, yeah. man. That's nice, man. Yeah. So you're just coming here to go to the shop, eh? Yeah, I just take a walk, stroll down Base Valley. Yeah. I but I, it, like I can say, I walk through Bertram's Base Valley, Trovo, all over, yeah. any time of yeah. the day, nothing really happens. No. No, really, not that I'm like... I'm but people know you. People yeah, know you. That's yeah, it. Yeah. That's it. Like, I'm well known all around. So. If you look behind me, you will see some of those famous double-story council flats here in Maurice Freeman Park. Now, you might notice that there's a slight difference between these flats and what I might have shown you in Triumph or in Fitas. That being that these are obviously much older and uh, hands down could very, very possibly be the actual first residential buildings in all of Johannesburg. And the main giveaway um, to their age is that you will notice that they're built out of large um, red stones that have been taken from the surrounding mountainsides of the Witwatersrand. So, real pieces of history there. And history must be preserved. Yeah. yeah. Are you recording? Mm -hmm. um, there's masterpieces lying around that were built 17th, 16th century that has been pushed down. Some people do want to preserve it, some others don't. So the idea is to put it into the ground. But I say, I'm a historian, I like history, I like antiques, I'm a collector. What more can I say? Um, old cars, old bikes, whatever it is. So, right behind me you can see some abandoned apartment buildings. Like I mentioned, Bertrams is one of the oldest areas in Johannesburg, if not actually the oldest. So, flats like this will be dating back to the late 1800s. Um, yeah, late 18th century, early 20th century. And uh, actually, the story behind some of these flats right here is a couple of years back in the 2010 uh, FIFA World Cup when South Africa was hosting it. The government actually evicted a lot of people from these houses and um, had a lot of these historical buildings actually uh, knocked down and replaced with uh, more modern accommodation for the uh, temporary visitors while South African citizens and people that have lived here for generations were uh, callously thrown out of their home permanently uh, without anywhere else to go. Yo, so I figured why not just take a quick walk through the neighboring area of Yeovil. It's um, also one of the most notorious neighborhoods in uh, all of South Africa, probably number two on the list to Hillbrow, but a lot more uh, of a suburban feel mixed in with an urban feel. Again, one of the oldest neighborhoods in all of Joburg and surrounding Witwatersrand, and uh, yeah, some really old, beautiful church buildings and such here. Because on the block we still pray. And in fact, this is beautiful Anglican church um, complex right next to me, all made out of stone, just like all of the original buildings in Johannesburg would have been allegedly made from Italian prisoners of war. Hey, Tong, why oh, they got us building these churches in South Africa? Catholic church in the background. Now, of course, I'm Eastern Orthodox, but I used to be Catholic. And uh, 
Yeah, one still finds a little bit of admiration for that Western architecture, let's be honest. Minus the Western theology. Yeah, so as you get the feel maybe, you know, Yeovil is one of those places in um, Johannesburg where let's just say, you know, somebody like me, somebody that looks like myself, kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. But, um, you know, generally in my experience, it's all about, um, you know, your attitude. <laughs> Yo, bro. What's up, King? What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, man? That's how, you, how you, bro? Yo, man, it's Jello Traps on time, you know what it is. Follow me on Instagram, at Jello Traps. I got 200 and 20, I uh, know, 201k followers. Yeah, hit me up. <laughs> Away, King, Away, what's King. Up, man? Yo, 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 I just live in this hood, man. I, hear, I see you talking about my hood. What's happening, man? What's up, so, man? Uh, you stay here in Yeovil, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still in this house here, yeah, you see. Yeah. Nice, bro. What's so, up, actually, you like more observatory side, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just for my hundred thousand. No, for sure, bro. For sure, <laughs> What's man. What's happening, man? What are you vlogging for, eh? Oh man, you know, I'm just uh, I'm filming the hoods, man. I'm oh, filming yeah, the yeah. hoods. Yeah. I'm filming uh, Johannesburg, you know, from the perspective of somebody on the ground floor. Yeah, 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 because you know what, okay, people yeah. in the international community, they get the wrong yeah. idea. Yeah, they won't the understand man. what's happening. Exactly, man. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like the news, whether it's like you know conservative, liberal, or whatever, yeah, yeah. it's always spinning a story, man. You know, <laughs> trying to tell yeah, people that to life you, is man. like you know. Shout out to my hood too. This is my hood. If you guys want to come here, you got to stay protected because, hey, man, it's not easy out here. It's all about hustle. Get yourself on the grind. Uh, put your hopes up. Stay positive and all that. Rah. True, true. <laughs> but you know what? At yeah. the end of the day, you say, like, yeah, it's rough and all of this, yeah. but people must still come through. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still people come must through still come through. Feel the energy, man. Feel the energy. Yeah, we got uh, proper people, positive people. It's just that, you know. When people are laid down, man, they all think about negative stuff and all that shit, you see. So that's why it's hard for the community to actually, you know, embrace themselves, you see. Uh, <laughs> for sure, King. What's your name again, bro? <laughs> it's Jello Traps. At, at Jello Traps. Find me on Instagram and Twitter. You know what it is. Jello Traps. <laughs> yeah. Away, King. Yeah. Peace, away. brother. It's J A L W E L Traps. Yes, sir. Away, King. Peace, man. <laughs> away. God bless, bro. It's like almost, uh, you know, to illustrate my point. If you uh, if you're on the ground floor, things are a little bit different. So uh, just before I wrap up this particular section here on Bertram's, I just wanted to say a quick word about um, you know why I do these videos. And I've spoken about this before in previous videos, but um, you know I've got a lot of friends in the international community that um, you know have a wrong idea about life in South Africa. And the truth of the matter is, I can't blame them for thinking one thing or the other, um, being that their only window into life here is going to be through the mainstream media. Whether that's going to be on the left side of the spectrum or the right side of the spectrum, it's always going to be skewered to a political slant and uh, it's always going to be serving an agenda or another. So I'm not going to tell you one thing or the other about life in South Africa. I'm just going to show you a window into my world, my experiences, using the resources that I have, being that I know these areas, I know people in these areas, and I just want you to uh, take a look around and uh, form your own opinion, being that, you know, I am obviously of the uh, Caucasoid persuasion, uh, being somewhat in the minority in these areas, uh, I am walking around with a pretty expensive camera, and, uh, you know, for the most part, everybody just greets me um, with love and um, with uh, acceptance, 
maybe a little bit of curiosity. I have had uh, one or two times where some gangsters have uh, approached me, but um, you know, we spoke it out. I stood my ground. Don't have to be a tough guy. Um, in fact, that's probably going to be <laughs> to your detriment if you're talking to somebody that's uh, you know really about that life. So let me just wrap this up in saying, um, I hope that you enjoy these videos. I hope that um, my own personal biases are not um, too heavily weighing into the um, uh, picture that I'm trying to paint. And um, yeah, like, subscribe, hit the bell, all of the things that YouTubers in fact tell you to do. And uh, I'm going to leave you the same way that I always leave you in saying, God bless, uh, may God preserve, protect, uh, neck a bog, zaštiti i sačuvaj, pomaže bog, and Duke of Johannesburg,